So I finally remembered to keep a, a, a tracker before I sent it out so I could do a video. Every every single tracker that I make, I don't for whatever reason, I've, other knives I, I, I'm, I'm okay with, but for some reason, tracker always gets posted out and then I think, ah, I should have, uh, should have took some pictures of it, should have done a video because I've put other knives on there, my other bushcraft um, range. And, uh, but I've never actually put a tracker on video. So anyway, this one here is ready to go out. It's in his little bag. And this one is Andy's, Andy's knife. He's over in Melbourne. Obviously I'm in Perth. A bit nippy, actually it's a bit, bit chilly this morning in Perth. I think we're down to like 10 degrees, so it's pretty cold. Anyway, back to the knife. So this is the knife. Actually, I might move forward a little bit. Come closer. So, here we go. Sheath, just a standard sheath, uh, belt, belt loop. Um, the actual blade itself, uh, knife itself, this is one of those, one of those knives. Let me just get a bit of cloth. One of those knives that I will, all my knives I'm sad, sad to, to see go because they, you put so much effort and time into them. And um, yeah, I'm always sad to, when I, when I post one off, it's like saying goodbye to a friend. But anyway, this one here, this is a tracker. Now we've got 3.2 millimeter AEBL stainless. Now it's more of a, I wouldn't call traditional, but more of more of a hunter style blade as opposed to sort of bushcraft shape. It's got like the slight like clip point there. Uh, saber grind. If you can see that saber grind there. And uh, the handles. It this is stabilized curly birch. Now I actually put it in with some other. I'm trying to think what it was. I think it was Jarrah, Jarrah wood when I stabilised it. I put it in the, the stabilising tank. And uh, I think some of the, whatever's in the wood, I'm not an expert on wood, but whatever's in it has has kind of soaked it out into the um, cactus juice resin. So it went a little bit darker. And I think it, it's it's picked up in the, in the as it, as it draws into the wood. And... Uh, it's actually come out really nice. It's got like a slightly darker look to it than the normal curly birch. So you can see that. And it's just got such a nice look to it. Uh, black G10 liners. I think it's like one, one mil black G10 liners. I saw my little mosaic pins on there. You can see them. And uh, I'll definitely be sad to say goodbye to this one. So it's, it just feels really nice in the hand. It's got such a nice look to it. And, and it's, it's, it's sharp as well, like, like usual. So it's nice and sharp. These are great for like fishing. That's the majority of the, of the ones I do actually sell. Uh, they you people, guys use them for fishing because they're just a good, um, you know, if you're gutting your fish and prep, you know, bait prep and all that kind of stuff, they're just a good, good all round knife and got a good cool shape to it as well. So, wet molded the sheath so that fits in there nice, nice snug fit. Just uh, like a natural, natural um, thread, natural look thread on there. Dyed the sheath a little bit darker, kind of complement the handle. I didn't want to go too light against the handle because sometimes it look, doesn't look so nice when you've got like a real light sheath against a lightish kind of wood. So went a little bit darker. And then uh, all goes into one of the little bags. And ready to post it across the other side of the country. So that was just a, a quick quick video just to show that particular style of knife 
um, which I've been meaning to want to do for a while. Um, I don't know if any other knife makers watch my videos. I watch plenty of other knife makers videos. You learn a lot from other other makers and some of the things they put on, little tips here and there. Um, it's always good to kind of see what's going on and how people do things. That, certain people do things, it doesn't actually, might not work for you, but it's worth giving it a go. Anyway, the, these here are, I think they're, my daughter's a, a makeup artist and these are makeup applicators or, or like lip, I don't know, lip gloss or whatever, a lipstick applicators but as you can see it's like a plastic stick and on the end it has got like a little foam is that not focusing yeah, it's not really focusing but it's got like a little foam tip to it now these are so good for putting dye on glue where if you normally use like the cotton buds q-tips whatever i always find with them that the, the the cotton part on the, on the end always starts it starts breaking down and you get like stringy bits and fluff coming off and this and that with these you don't get that so they're really cheap to buy i think you buy them in packs of 100 or whatever she she buys quite a few of them so uh but they're such a good little tool um when you've got if you're doing sort of uh like I've got a sheath here so when you when you you do your lines and stuff like that they're really good if you just want to if you just want to literally dip that in your dye and you can run it just down the down the the stitch the stitch line just keep it nice and neat if you just want to do the, the that little piece there it works out quite good um yeah so they're makeup applicators or lip gloss applicators i don't know <laughs> i'll have to ask her exactly what they are but they're pretty cheap and uh work really well so that's just a little thing there that i wanted just to show anyway i'm going to get this knife packaged up and then get on with some more i've got quite a few on the go at the moment <coughs> um, i've got a few what have we got here i've got uh two dingoes and a bushwood whoops bushwood original uh, all AEBL stainless. I tend to do stainless, like batches of stainless steel, um, and then go back to carbon steel if anybody wants a carbon. But at the moment, uh, the stainless is is very very popular. Obviously, it's more low maintenance, and you don't have to don't have to worry so much that it's going to corrode and and ruin your knife. But uh, I normally try and do batches of stainless. I learn. A while back that you can't use the grinding belts if you used it on carbon steel you can't use it on uh, stainless steel when you grind the steel obviously little bits of carbon steel get into the belt and then if you use it on stainless steel when you're grinding obviously the heat and um, the fact that it's it's cutting into the steel to, to remove that remove the, 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 the you know the, the bulk of the, the steel there it it almost I wouldn't say it welds it in but it, it kind of impregnates the the carbon steel onto the surface of the um stainless steel then obviously if you're dipping it in to cool it because it, it kind of confused me for a while i was dipping the stainless steel in to cool it in between grinding and uh i looked at it and it was going rusty and i think what the hell was going on there i thought i might have picked up a piece of carbon steel instead of the stainless but it was stainless and then uh I did a bit of research and that was the problem. The fact that I'd use the you know, carbon steel on the belt and then I'd use it on the stainless. So I tend to always do a batch of stainless and then if anyone wants carbon, then I'll just do that on their own. So I think that is about it. Just a, a quick video and uh, like and sub, I never get it, I can never get it right. Like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. Stay safe. See ya.